Hey there, you're listening to the Group X Podcast with Tony Zanato. Today I'm talking with Jolie Davey, one of the franchise owners of World Gym Australia who's involved with everything from operations through to Group X. We chat about how she got into fitness, 32 World Gym clubs Australia-wide with eight more opening within the next 12 months, Les Mills and freestyle program offerings, Group Fitness Managers, their skill set required to be one and how we make their role easier, purchasing the best equipment for your club, and all things Group X. Jolly, thank you so much for joining me on the show. I greatly appreciate your time. Oh, no worries. Thank you. Cool. Tell us, how did you get into the fitness industry? Where did it all start for you? Hmm. Well, um, I could say that really it started with my mum. <laughs> uh, my mum used to teach uh, back in the days jazzergetics. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> jazzergetics for Les Mills when they had a. Um, it was just a, a room basically in Victoria Street in Auckland, um, and everyone went there at lunch times to do jazzergetics or aerobics or whatever step and all those sorts of classes. So it was back then that I started just um, doing it, participating. I was I think I was like eight or nine, 10. And, um, and then of course she has now had a yoga studio for like 30, 40 years. Oh, wow. So, so it's sort of a, a that's where it sort of started. And um yeah, then then went into hairdressing um, for what twenty five years. But during the hairdressing, I think the only thing we used to go to the gym for was body jam yep. every night. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> being hairdressers, that's we we're up the front row just body jamming, and that was sort of, I guess that was my introduction. Introduction. To yeah. Okay. So little. you're originally from New Zealand, obviously. Yep. 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 When did you Auckland. When did you move from from NZ to Australia? Uh, I was 25, 26, so a while ago. <laughs> yeah, and what brought you What brought you over? What was it that made uh, you want to come over to, to Aussie? It was a man. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Who was my husband. Yep. <laughs> um, John, John. So John was living here, um, left Auckland, um, and, yeah, he came over one day and, and sort of took me out for lunch, and then the rest is history. Yeah, love it. So, <laughs> Shifted to Australia, and he was working for a company, um, Masashi, so a supplement company at the time. So we sort of travelled around doing a bit of that. Yeah. So when you first got here, where did you teach your first class in Australia? Were you teaching at that stage? I taught at Fernwood was my okay. first class, Fernwood at Rabina. So, yeah, I went to Fernwood too because obviously when I was having my babies, that is sort of a, a nice place to go when you're having babies and, and teaching at the same time. Um, so freestyle cycle, uh, it was the, the one thing that really – when I put on my 21 kilos for each baby, that was the one thing that just I found just annihilated body fat. <laughs> so that was my first go-to that I fell in love with and I was like, oh, I think I want to teach this. So, so where to from Fernwood? What, where was the next club you went to and what sort of, uh, where did it go from there? Fitness, fitness First. Uh, I think I was at Fitness First for maybe 10, 10 years. Before we actually, uh, before we actually then decided that we we're going to open up world gyms. Okay, and where was the first world gym? Where did it start from? My, my I'm going to say, I think it was in Penrith, but I could be completely yes, wrong. Right. It was. Yep. No, you're right. Yep. Yep. You're right. So the first one was in Penrith because uh, our other partner Mike, uh, Mike Nyston and John are the uh, World Gym Australia franchise owners um so he was down there so we opened the first one in Penrith and actually such an awesome club uh they've just redone it all again now too so it's all um and probably redone it again since they're shut down at the moment um I know they've done the bathrooms again and then our second one was World Gym Ashmore so that's where we jumped into that one on the coast so World Gym in Penrith, was it a gym prior to being World Gym or did, did you guys just go and start? Cent- uh, yeah, it was a swim centre. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was a swimming centre. So we sort of took over part of it and then we took over the swim part of it and filled it all in and, and, and expanded. So, yeah. Wow. Okay. And when was that? When did, when did World Gym start in Australia? 
15 years ago, 15, 16 years ago, yeah. So started with yeah, so with Penrith, went to Ashmore. Ashmore. Yep. Yep. How many have we got now? And thirty-two. I had 32. to. I had to, thirty-two. I had to write down my little facts here. So thirty-two, and we've got um, eight more opening within the next twelve months. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's a little during, bit crazy at the moment. Yeah, during during a stage <laughs> in our lives when when. Uh, Yes, it's a pandemic. Yes, and that's oh, that's huge. Yeah. I think that that's yeah. testament to a brand that knows what it's doing and 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 is here for the long haul. So, congratulations it's to me, you guys for that as well. A, yeah, it, it seems you know it just comes naturally. I feel like it's just something well, John and I enjoy so much. It doesn't actually really feel like that stressful. <laughs> it's quite fun. <laughs> no, brilliant. So, uh, you mentioned Ashmore. Now, Ashmore obviously yeah. being the first club in Queensland to open. When yeah. you opened Ashmore, what was it? Was it? And and I'm going to say this in in a way that in the past, World Gym would have probably been known as a bodybuilding gym. I, I knew we know, exactly what you were going to say then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These days, it's not. We know that uh, it's right, it's right. very different. <laughs> but back then, when you opened Ashmore, was it? predominantly bodybuilding or did you have group fitness involved purely, that's right yeah it was it it was just a gym floor it was quite a small space uh, i think we only had 600 square meters it was quite tiny really um and then i twisted my husband's arm so we then added a tiny mezzanine floor up the top for a cycle studio brilliant yeah so we only started with cycle and um weights really um, and the cycle studio there just did really well. It just, um, so then I thought, oh, you know. And then when the next room became available, which was a computer shop or something next door, they gave us the opportunity to take over and we set up a group fitness room there as well. A uh, little bit different though because it did have that stigma. Like you said, it was it was definitely our first um first club and it was definitely the the world gym style of quite hardcore training and it had that mentality um like you say nowadays that's shifted with our new gyms that we set up that they are definitely quite you know group fitness orientated now but um group fitness there has always been quite small but but it's still an offering to um i would say to facilitate people who weight train. So we've kind of worked around that. So what does better there is the cycling, the yoga, the Pilates, the boxing, that kind of stuff. Um, Just trying to find what works in each club. They're all different. Um, But, yeah, so it hasn't really been huge there group fitness-wise, but definitely still a nice offering for those members that want to still do it. Yeah. So Ashmore is an area. Can you tell me what Ashmore? I've 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 been to Queensland maybe half a dozen times, and I don't. I tell me, get me off the plane, turn me around three times, and I'm lost. Yeah, I wouldn't have a clue. So, well, what is the as an area? I mean, I'm because I'm more burly end. Um, I never looked at putting a gym in Ashmore. It's just that site happened to come up, and obviously. Um, the rent there was quite cheap. This is me saying it from an owner's point of view. <laughs> um, so, that, and it makes a difference to go into something where the overheads are obviously lower, um, and therefore, you know, obviously, it, it's more more profit. But also, it's just more doable. It's just, um, especially when we were back then. Uh, paying for everything ourselves, so everything was coming out of John's and Mike's own pockets um and it has been i'd say up until probably only the last five years really that you know we we now have um more help in that area <laughs> yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. totally that, that's yeah. understandable i think that the my I'm trying to get my head around the reasoning and you sort of mentioned that the club was was there around ashmore as the the venue, but also uh, trying to understand the the I suppose the demographic in Ashmore as well. Is it it's obviously like, different yeah, to I'd say middle? I'd say middle income. Yeah, it's 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 um yeah it's sort of in, in the in the middle of sort of more towards the you know uh, see Coomer is the closer one to that one as well. 
Um, and on the way to Brisbane, Coomera actually is one of our clubs that does amazing. It's our biggest club at the moment. Um, so between Coomera and Ashmore, it's actually quite good because they're about 20 minutes apart. And Ashmore is more of that hardcore style training, whereas Coomera offers a lot more of the group fitness. So um, with our passport memberships, those two work quite well together. Um, and then, of course, you've got Burley, which is a very Byron Bay boutique okay. style. Um, does amazing for group fitness and especially cycle. Really? So um, at, off, off the, for, for, for the World Gym Clubs, how many programs, how many different styles of group fitness are you offering? In clubs, is it is it uh, something that you guys from head office um, dictate to them, or say, "Hey, this is what you do," or is it up to each club to to really roll with what they want to offer for their members yeah. in there? Yeah. So, from a head office point of view, we always say to them that they should have at least Les Mills, because Les Mills we say sets a benchmark, um, a benchmark, and and not obviously all of the programs, but what they think will work in the club. We always say um, body pump, grit, um, sprint does so well for us. Um, you know, those sorts of programs. And then layer the freestyles on top of that. You know, boxing does really well at world gyms. What does really well is experts and um, sort of athletics, um, our athletic style training. Um, but we just say Les Mills sets a really good benchmark and then from then, because people will join, even though actually our freestyle classes do really, really well and probably better than our Les Mills classes, except for sprint and pump, um, I would say that, you know, it just, people will join to come to, if you don't have body pump on your timetable, they won't join the club. It's that so staple it's really that they know. A, yeah, it's really just a, a way of getting people to join because, yes, we have body pump. Yes, we have sprint and RPM. Um, and then they obviously roll into the other stuff. So it's really just a, a good benchmark, I think, for most clubs to actually have a couple of Les Mills programs at least. Yep. And um, and then move on from there, yeah. The freestyle programs, are they program-driven or are they instructor-driven? As in, what do you think it is that, that attracts members to come to those classes, the instructor or, or the program that's actually on offer? And once again, that's probably different in different clubs. So if it's freestyle and some of the PTs are teaching it, then it's definitely very instructor-driven. Um, you know, obviously they're on the floor telling their clients, come to my boxing class or come to my CrossFit class because we call it XFIT, CrossFit 30-minute uh, um functional training in the functional area they do really well so i would say instructor driven a lot for the freestyle classes um but then also our freestyle I include yoga and pilates and freestyle as well and i think therefore those programs really just invite a lot of people and i'm finding nowadays um our yoga and pilates are huge across the board Yes. In most, yeah, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, it just seems to be you just can't have enough yogas on the timetable. So hence hence what we're doing at Burley is adding um, another studio. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, we're taking over um, the, the building next door, which is great, in November. So, yeah, yoga is huge for us. So... Just, I think it complements people weight training as yeah. well. Yeah. And it's, it is a world gym. Yeah. And at the end of the day, there's going to be quite serious people that are quite serious about their training. And I think a lot of our programs complement what they do downstairs or in the club to, to what, you know, they get better range of movement if they do the yoga and the Pilates, they have a strong core. Um they do their cycle because it's just a really good low impact way of doing cardiovascular training. So it complements what they do. I think that's a, mm. and, and you know, I've been in the industry now since the end of, or the beginning of 2003. And 
my introduction to the industry was predominantly around group fitness, yeah. uh, strength training, cardio, you know, on the gym floor. The I'll be honest and say the Pilates and yoga studio that was down around the corner, I never visited. Yeah, it was always just <laughs> yeah. just down around there, and, and I was like, "See it, yeah, cool, great." Saw people going into it, and back then in two thousand and three, it was it was solid, it was busy, but I don't think it was the forefront in a lot of people's mind. I think back then yeah. our industry was very much around. Yeah, you did your cardio, and yes, you went and lifted your weights, and you threw heavy things around. And the evolution of that has actually changed. What is nice to hear for me, and I think a lot of the listeners, is that the fact that as we're saying, World Gym, predominantly known for a weightlifting gym, has the group fitness offering, but knowing that you've actually got those members that are in there that are doing it all and are listening to likes of yourself and likes of the instructors to get into doing something that is good for them in that regards with um, yoga and Pilates as well. Yeah, I had a a hip replacement earlier on this year and – One of the things that the doctor and so many people I've chatted to had sort of said to me, Tony, you you know, yes, it's worn out. It's gone. So that's why I had to be replaced. But I look Mm -hmm. back on that and I think, you know what, if I had actually gotten into doing yoga and gotten into doing Mm -hmm. Pilates and gotten into doing the lengthening and strengthening of different muscles instead of me just, yep, lift those heavy things over there and get on the bike and smash myself there, Mm -hmm. that might not have had to happen at the age of 44. You know, I might not have had to have a hip replacement just yet. And I think it's this day and age, more and more people are starting to realise that and it's nice to see that you're offering those different things. Well, even the younger ones, I feel like what you do in your 20s and your 30s is going to show up in your body in your 40s and your 50s. Yep, yep. <laughs> so I think a lot of them are getting smarter like that. A lot of them yeah. are uh, coming and doing a lot more, you know, bar style classes yep. and, and yep. Pilates and, and yoga, whether it's yin yoga or vinyasa flow yoga. Um, they just, yeah, a lot more of them are, are going for that lower impact stuff. Yep. That's hey, can I different I'm finding in world gyms? It might be different. I'd say it, you know, clubs like I remember at Fitness First, it was all body attack and body step and uh, body combat, you know, which is great and amazing. Um, but in in your fifties, are those programs going to show up in your body <laughs> in some way? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I think without without you know my. my my 12 years of teaching the gym was through a fitness first and nothing against fitness first, but I think it's very much driven around group fitness management in each club as to really mm-hmm. what that drive and what those programs are. And, and as mm-hmm. it, nothing against the other chains or anything like that out there, oh, no, still, still work for them. them. I they, love them all. Yeah. yeah they, <laughs> they, 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 who's in charge at the club in the, in regards to group fitness is really where the passion does lie. And I say yeah. that being, being a group fitness manager for the time that I was at fitness first in North Sydney, when I took over, the cycle studio was chockers oh, yeah. every single day. Yeah, that was my passion. That was my, you know, we had four classes in most days or three classes most days. And every single class was, I'm going to say 90 to 95%, if not 100% attendance, chockers. Yeah. I think that's me. That's me too. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's, there is that passion that, that you, you drive, you know, and that's saying that can being completely honest with myself. It's probably why when I was there that yoga and Pilates did their thing. Yep, and I had the instructors in there that were uh, amazing at what they did, and they j- I let them just – that was their studio. You know, you guys mm-hmm. roll with it. You know what you're doing. I don't. I don't understand it. I'm here to support you, but I want you to mm-hmm. just roll with it, and that's why they made that absolutely amazing. And I think when you when I look at different clubs and when the different clubs that I'm chatting to, especially when chatting to the group fitness managers, you can see where their passion is and really mm-hmm. what's pumping in those clubs. Yeah, That's some so the, true. Some of the clubs I've spoken to that are uh, highly um, in, in Western Sydney that are a demographic that is of European background that you notice that strength training isn't a big thing out there, that, but Zumba, mm-hmm. Shabam, Jam, dance style programs go through the roof and you have a chat to yeah. the group fitness manager and the group fitness manager is an amazing dancer. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, right spot. You put that person in a uh, Bondi club here in Sydney, as an example, it's not going to work. You know, dance mm. is a very, very small percentage of the timetable. The rest of it mm-hmm. must be attack, combat, pump, you know, cycle, yeah. that kind of stuff. It just, it's very interesting to see each demographic that you go to and where each club is, what style of programming fits best in yeah. those areas. I found that with um, each of my 
group fitness and um, GFMs at each of the world gyms, I have definitely found that whatever they teach <laughs> seems to be what really works in the works club. Works in that club, yeah. And it's not necessarily because they are just promoting, obviously, those programs. They're promoting everyone else. Um, it just seems to be where energy goes, energy flows, doesn't yes. it? So yeah. It's, yep. in whatever their passion is seems to be the highest sort of, you know, numbers and classes. But, um, yeah, it's interesting. Hey, I yeah. want to ask you a question around group fitness management, if I can. The group yep. fitness managers that work for your clubs, and I, mm-hmm. I understand that each club is, is um, independently owned, Yep, even though yep. as a as a as a franchisee group you've I understand how that all works. In in the clubs that are head office owned, how yep. do you choose your group fitness manager? What do you look for in that person? Mm, and that has changed. So it's a good question because what I used to look for was probably, you know, the best instructors. <laughs> um but what I what I look for now is somebody who's got a really good connection with people, um, with not just with the members, with um, the people around them, the management, even just in the interview, how they interview. But I seem to look at people who have really good connection. Also, what I think I look for too is computer skills. I know it sounds crazy. But group fitness management has got huge with social media. So I find, you know, looking for the best instructor as a group fitness manager is not really uh, my my number one thing number anymore. One thing. Yeah, yeah. They need a great connection with people. Um, they need to be bubbly and warm. Um and you just get a, I don't, it, it's just a vibe. I don't know, when I'm interviewing people, I could interview three or four people for the one job and I'll sit down with them all and they, they might all be amazing and there's one of them I just go, oh, my God, I love her or him. I just it, And that, I know it's, it's so non-technical way of choosing them, but I just have a vibe and it's a personality that I just warm to and if I can warm to someone I don't know straight away, um. I just go, oh, yeah, that's the yeah, one. That's the and fit. Yeah. 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 It just, I don't know. It's just a vibe. It's just a gut instinct. Um, but yes, connection, obviously great at what they do, um, instructing wise. Uh, they do need to teach multiple programs, though. That is one thing I'm really big on. If they can be in most of the rooms, say if we have two or three group fitness rooms, if they, You know, if they only just teach yoga or just teach cycle, it's okay, but I would rather someone who taught different genres, maybe two or three, two or three, don't have to teach hundreds, Um, and and definitely really good on social media. I mean, we do have someone who does solely our social media, but they do need to understand for their club and their department, group fitness, um, because they'll be posting once a day. And they'll also have to, you know, be monitoring the likes and and tagging and everything like that. So I think that's really important part of it as well now, huge. Totally. I I agree that having that instructor or having that group fitness manager that is trained up in programs, so one, they can step in if they need to, if they need to help cover a class, they, they've got that skill yeah. set. But also so yeah. they really understand what each program, they don't need to be trained in in 11 different programs, as you're saying, but understanding no. different genres and different styles of programming and, and teaching yeah. Is, yeah. is key so that they can give the feedback, they can actually sit down and watch and, and feel confident enough to be able to say, as an example, I've never done yoga, but I understand the concepts and I'd be able to give you some feedback in that regards. And I think that is the yeah. skill set that that a lot of group fitness managers need to have, to have that confidence yeah. and have that set to be able to go, hey, I'm not 100% trained in this. I haven't done, you know, a thousand hours worth of yoga training or whatever it may be, but there are certain things which I could look at and say, hey, yep, yeah, perhaps this, or, you know, have you thought about this and getting that across, I think is vital. You know, I've seen so yeah. many clubs and met with so many clubs from my years of Les Mills and even now chatting to clubs with body bike stuff when group fitness managers, as you said, just ha- there's some that just have a passion around one program only. That one yeah. program's so successful, but the rest 
are lacking yeah, yeah, because they don't have that confidence to be able to chat to people for one or have the confidence and have the skill set, I should say, to manage those different people. You know, group fitness, as we know, there are so many personalities, so many personalities. Okay. You know, you look at a team of group fitness instructors and, and say there's 30 on your team, probably not two of them are going to be the same. You know, there's so many different types yeah. of personalities you need to deal with. And that is a skill set for a group fitness manager is hard to come by sometimes, but if they've got mm-hmm. it, as you said, and I think you, you mentioned it when you were saying you just gel with that person, you yeah. know, you know what you're expecting in your team or for your mm-hmm. business and finding yeah. that instructor that gels with, mm-hmm. yeah, you've got them. And I think it's still, it is hard though for some to, to grab it because it's a skill set that is, I don't think it's something that you can really learn. Yeah. You know, I think yeah. it's something that you 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 develop along the way, but I don't think it's something that you just sort of, yeah, it's. Yeah. There's definitely to- some people are, are more have got that leadership. Yes. Um, and whether it's just, it, it, you know, it can be leadership in so many different ways just by simply just wanting to to be around their energy or um leading in the way that they teach their classes but also like at world gyms i love it when the group fitness managers or um anybody really i love team teaching i love um just creating that vibe so if you can jump in on multiple classes and and jump in and teach a couple of tracks with them and just have fun um i just think it just creates the whole atmosphere of just you know this is not work for us this is just (laughs) this is just everybody getting together and and um having fun really this is the group x podcast hey on on group fitness and and so let's just say at the clubs that you're at um how is how do you guys manage covers how is that process managed? And there's, so there's many ways that I've heard, but I'm interested yeah, to see how you guys do it. We have a group fitness um, Facebook page, and um, it's quite good for us on the Gold Coast because we have our four clubs on the Gold Coast. Um, and we just, if we have any covers that we need, we just all post up onto that page. And seriously, the, the GFMs have to do pretty much nothing. On that page, it's got... I think it's 900, uh, 800, 800 on that page. And people just jump on and just it's covered in two seconds. It's actually been one of the easiest ways. Uh, it's the best thing I ever did. And also we also have on the Gold Coast, it's the um, Gold Coast Instructors page as well. So you could post on the World Gym Instructors page and also the Gold Coast Instructors page. And either way, someone's going to jump on somewhere. Um, that's the good thing I think about with us with World Gyms because they're not um, employed by the gym as a group fitness instructor, they're contractors. Um, we then can take covers from pretty much anywhere. Yeah, obviously we do. We take the ones on the World Gym page first and then if others jump on from a page and we may not know them, then we can obviously bring them, connect to them and, and maybe even be there at the club and and set them up and take them through what they need to know. Um, so they just need yeah. to have an. They just need to have an ABN in order to to put your yep. invoice. Yep. 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 I think yeah. that's, that's perfect. Yeah, that I think is. that's that's um, something that's not happening down here in Sydney as much. Well, I should say wasn't happening down here in Sydney as much. Who knows what's going to happen once clubs reopen down here after being in lockdown for yeah. what feels like Man. an eternity now. But once that happens, I think that's oh, I think that's a way over to. Over the 11th, it's not that far. No, but 10 days. And, and let me tell you, I am, I'm counting. I can't <laughs> <wait>. <laughs> it's I the little know. things. It's the little things of just being able to go for a coffee or just going to, you know. Yeah, get out of the house to go and do something when you feel like you want to. Yeah, but yeah, for sure. but but no, it's it's. I think that's um, back on the the instructors is is. I think it's the best way to do it. You know, having having that pool of instructors where yeah, great, you've got your instructors for your club, you've got your instructors for your group, but knowing that you know what, if you've exhausted that list and you need someone. If there's somebody mm-hmm. that's out there that you can go, hey, yep, yeah, cool, can you teach? Yeah, cool. You know what? It's I urgent, I need you now. I haven't seen you teach, but, you know, I trust that you're going to be doing a good enough job yeah. to come in. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's great. That's the easiest way instead of, right, you've got to go through all this paperwork, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, get on the books, and we can only use them. Blah, 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 blah. No, 
yeah. having someone you yeah. can grab so quickly, I think works really well, but also making sure that, you know, yeah, that was great for that, that cover if it's needed at the last minute, but yeah. having the right fit for your demographic, yeah. I think is, yeah. is, is vital and key. I mean, I remember my days at North Sydney. Yeah. yeah cool. Can you teach? Yeah. Great. Cool. Come on in. It's yours. Tony, yeah. what were you thinking? You know, did you do we have, did you even see that instructor? Have you even seen them teach? Do you know whether they're yeah. going to fit to what's here? Back then, yeah. I'll be honest and say it was more like just get in and teach. You know, you're on the books of fitness first. You must be okay. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. These days, I think and, that's changed where you need to really, yeah. as a group fitness manager or as an owner of the gym, you need to make sure that that person you're putting in front of your members is the right fit. Your crew is yeah. is perfect because if they're not, that's the easiest way to destroy your group fitness. Yeah, oh, for sure. I mean, the amount of feedback that we get. And actually, sometimes when you do just get um, a cover that you have not had in the club before, people, I mean, they're very vocal. Um, people are like, oh, I love, who was that person, you know, who covered on blah, blah, blah. And, and, and so you get really good feedback that, oh, he was amazing or he was good looking or whatever he was. <laughs> so, and quite often you go, oh, phew, thank goodness for that because it was just like a, you know, very fast cover from, you know, maybe the main instructor page and not the World Gym page. But most of us on the Gold Coast, it's such a close knit uh, with group fitness, I find. And so if it's someone I haven't seen teach, um, one of the other GFMs would definitely have would seen not. them teach. Not yeah. just text. Between, you know, the GFM for Good Life or Fitness First, we all are so friendly here. I feel like no one's competing against each other, but I, I mean, we're not, I know we are, but we're not. Yep. No, it makes sense. <laughs> so yep. From the group fitness community, we're also entwined that if someone, if I haven't seen them teach, someone knows, oh no, they're good. They've taught for me before. They'll be fine or they're great or whatever. So you know how it's, refreshing um, that is to hear what you just said and the fact that, you know, you, there are, so many different clubs up there, but you all work in together. Oh, we, yeah. yeah my we my, my yeah. travelling around New South Wales and WA for Les Mills stuff, I come across a lot of clubs in, in regional areas as well as bigger centres, big, bigger bigger regions, so big cities is what I'm trying to say. Get the words out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> where in regional centres, there might be, say, four or five gyms. No, you can't yeah. work here. You can't work here if you're working here. Um, yeah, I've heard that before too. I yeah. don't get that. I don't understand that in this industry, in this day and age, especially when we have group of instructors, up north. when they're casual, the casual yeah. instructors, you can't, you cannot, you cannot restrict a casual, a casual employee's mm. work by saying, no, you can only, what? You can only teach here or one place. You can't teach it place two or place three. No. Sorry, that that's, yeah. I, I don't gel with that, and I don't think a lot of a lot of us we in the industry. Some, yeah, do. we have some of those issues up at our um, gyms up north. That have uh, a couple of the very big clubs up there have sort of said to um, some of the instructors, "If you work for us, you can't work for World Gym." Or you know, I'm yep. not going to mention the other club, but yep. Um, yep. which I was just thinking nowadays is really strange it's, because. Yeah. If you think back to, well, it would be to if it was a forty-hour-a-week job or thirty-eight-hour-a-week job, but then you yes, you might be able to say that you know you, you, this is your job, but they teach what five or six classes. Yeah, I think the day gone are the days where members would have followed an instructor from gym to gym to gym to gym to gym. gym. Yeah, if it's part of the one chain. Yeah, totally. If they've got that, yeah. that that passport membership, yeah, they will. But if if they're at at Tony's World of Fitness over here, yep, yeah, and yeah. Tony's teaching at this club, and then Tony's also teaching at at Jolly's World of Fitness over here, that member has joined that gym these days because that gym offering suits them. Yeah, mm. they're not going to leave that gym just because of one instructor and go over here. Yeah, but I think there is that old school, I'll call it old school mentality in some regional areas where they are very threatened. No, you can't work elsewhere yeah. because if you work elsewhere, our members are going to leave us here and go over there. No, I think that's, that's where there's there's a problem with the offering for starters mm. of what's what's going on in that gym. But yeah, I also think that... With your offering, yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, back in, I remember it back in 2003, 2004, first starting, as an instructor, you taught as many classes as you could. I mean, I was teaching... 
it was up to 23 classes in a week at one stage, as well as doing oh, PT, yeah. just yeah. to make ends meet. You know, living in Sydney, the rent was through the roof. You had to do whatever you could, as well as, you know, your PT clients and everything. And I think this day and age, if you can't do that, you can, yeah. <laughs> I find people have multiple um, memberships on the coast. I find people that, you know, might belong still to the club around the corner and then they belong to our club as well. So they might like our club more for cycle and for yoga and then they might join the other club because they've got body attack and wow. whatever. Okay. Yeah. Lots of our members go to multiple clubs. So, so not, not that, just well gym clubs but different different. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yep. Okay. So, and, and it, I just find in our day and age, people also will maybe belong to the gym, but also belong to a boutique as well. So they might also go to Fit 45 or they might go to a Pilates studio and still belong to the gym as well. So I find people tend to have multiple memberships. Um, and, and, and again, some still even have all the virtual online at home as well so i just so they've got everything they've got all their offerings and yeah yeah i just think people now just want convenience you know if i can't get here then i'll go there if i can't do that then i'll do it at home yeah it's been great cool hey i want to i want to just touch back on group fitness management for a second if we can yeah you you sort of mentioned what you look for in that group fitness manager as in the style of of that person and the skills that they've got. Have you have do you have your group fitness managers gone and done the Les Mills group fitness management seminar yes. courses? Yes. Yep. And yeah. and nothing so, against Les Mills because I love the guys at Les Mills. Worked for them for five years and still heavily involved with them <laughs> in everything I do. Yeah. But how much did they get out of the group fitness management seminars that they've done, and how much were they able okay. to implement? I think they suddenly develop an understanding of what they need to be doing. Like, um, and also just tracking. I think just doing the numbers and doing the figures and, you know, of what, you know, your big, hairy, audacious target is. I know it worked for me. Me personally, I've done the course four times. So, <laughs> such a nerd. Um, <laughs> no, I, no know, look, I, I, I'm going to say not the nerd. I, 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 <laughs> When I was at, you know, the five years that I was there, I think it was probably two or three a year that we'd go around and do as a as an account manager. And there was some people that went to every single one that I did. And it's because there's so much information. You go back yeah. in the club and there's only a little amount you can do with the time constraints and everything else you've got going on. And I think yeah. every time someone else came along, they'd pick up something different or even something on top of what we'd discussed before and be yeah. able to go away and implement that in club. You know, the seminar is one day. Yep. There's so much information. Yeah. There's eight, the eight keys that you run yeah. through. There's a lot to try and implement when you get back into club. So doing it as many times yeah. as you have, I think is great because you're always going to constantly learn and you want to learn. Yeah. Obviously, that's why you're going there to do it. But I think yeah. it's it's a I believe it's the staple that group fitness managers need. Yeah, oh, if I can totally. be bold enough to so, say it. Uh how many did I book in the last one? So 16 have just done the latest one. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So um and because now it's online now, of course, so it's different now. Yeah, which is which is good because they can kind of do it in their own in their own, own their time and pace. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I haven't done that one. I haven't jumped on. I should probably jump on and do that because it's now free for the um, GFMs at the moment. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, which okay. is I, I wasn't aware of that. I need to have a chat to Lee. He hadn't told me that was Lee. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's all GFMs or if it's just World Gym or. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We can always edit that part out later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll find out before we go there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's but, okay. Yeah. 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 No, I think it's great though. That the the I know that the program has developed or what the, the seminar has evolved over the years and, and adapted. I mean, the first one that I did was very basic, and I know that Les Mills have invested a lot of time, energy, and and money into making it um yeah. what it is now because they realize that there is there's a lot more to group fitness management rather than just adding up numbers at the end of a week doing oh, the do pays you know and, who I and, think need to do it even more is the owners yeah. and the managers to understand what the group fitness manager actually has to do. <laughs> yeah, totally. So totally. So 
So when yeah. I sent this last one out, I just sent it out into the um, World Gym Australia owners and managers page. And I said, this is for you GFMs, but you guys really should be doing it to know what Understand. needs to be done and what needs to be monitored and understood and grown and promoted and, you know. in Within retention. World Gym, is, is the group fitness management role a full-time role? Or how many hours do they do no, a week? No. And that varies in each club. I would say our minimum, uh, which is Ashmore, because it's just got a very small group fitness timetable. They've only got 28 28 classes on their whole timetable. Um, So she only does 10 hours a week. And then if she does more, she just will add them on top. Um, Our bigger clubs, we go 15 to 20, um, just depending on, on the size of the timetable. Once again, so over 40 classes usually goes to 20 20 hours. Um, And then what I've found lately is that I'm preferring now to hire a group fitness manager who also then wants to, who wants full-time work. So then I'll go, okay, well, maybe we have you on sales here for a little bit or we do, you know, which do you prefer, sales or social media? So maybe I have them doing group fitness for 15 hours a week and then I might have them doing sales for how many hours I might have them doing reception for however many hours and then that way I've got them totally involved in the club and then they they cover all areas and then that way usually if someone needs group, anything group fitness they're in the club anyway yeah yeah it's it's often, interesting interesting when when I'm still talking to clubs that will have 70 upwards classes per week across three studios that they're still only giving their group fitness manager 10 to 15 hours a week. I look at that and I think that's, that's not enough time to do a group fitness manager's role. You know, I still strongly believe from my days that it's, it's a full-time role. Yeah. Just group fitness Mm -hmm. and, and not Mm -hmm. sales and not membership stuff or anything else, not reception, but as in, Group fitness. If you really want group fitness to function on all cylinders, having yeah. someone that is in the club from the time the first class is on in the morning till the time that last class finishes of a day, to be there to be that point of contact. It's almost like they are the CEO of group fitness in your club. Yeah. Where they've got to know. Yeah. I'm going to say they've got to know virtually every single member. Yeah. They need yeah. to understand yeah. every every member that's walking into group fitness, know them or at least have that member know who they are. They're that presence in the club. Mm. Um, but having that that group fitness manager know every single instructor and how mm. they operate, who they are as a person, but also to be able to give them feedback and assess them on a regular basis. Yeah. As we mm. said, touched on before, don't need to be trained in every single program, but need to be able to assess yeah. that instructor and give great feedback because if feedback's coming through from your members around an instructor, the GFM needs to have that skill set and the confidence to be able to chat to the instructor and say, hey, We've had this feedback come through. I want to come in and have a look at your classes as well to understand. Could just be a one-off. Yep. One yeah. one one member may have just not gelled with me when I was teaching. Whatever. Yep. <laughs> or if there's more things coming through, is having that in, that group fitness manager have the time to sit down and, and look at that, as well as make yeah. sure the timetable's up to date online and in club. Make mm-hmm. sure that if they're doing the pays and they're going through all that stuff, that's all done as well. Making sure that yeah. covers are found. Yep. There's still a lot, as we know, a lot more that goes on behind the scenes. And on top scenes. of that is all the social media posts. Yep. That's, that's yep. the big, that's the yeah. extra, I think, at yeah. the moment too. And that's that's even even some of the other chains that are out there when I see they're still only giving them maybe 15 to 20 hours a week, and that may be even across two clubs. I yeah. still go, what? I know. How? Yeah. How can you do that? To, as, as an instructor, sorry, as a group fitness manager, I'd probably turn around and go, no chance, I've can't, I can't do what yeah. a group fitness management role is, you know. To me, I've been designing yeah. software stuff in the background for, for a while now and, and, and it's getting closer to getting out there. But it's around having group fitness management be able to, to as an instructor, jump on, I finish teaching, I can put my numbers in, bang, it goes straight through to the system. Yep. At the same time, that's also me doing my timesheet goes through to the club. So you as a group fitness manager at any time can live, can jump on and go, hey, look at that. Yep. There's all those class numbers. It's a live thing. If mm. I need to find a class cover, I'm the instructor. Yeah, I'll jump on there and tick this and go, cool, I need an instructor like you're doing with the Facebook page, but this is yeah. just to 
instructors that are on this system. Cool, yeah, I can teach. No, I can't. It automatically updates the timetable and does everything in the background. Taking yeah. that stuff away from the group finish manager's role and making it all automated frees them up mm. to be able to do a lot more stuff. Mm. Frees them up to yeah, deal with conflict, deal with whatever they've got to do, assess and do all those things. They could probably then help out more on mm. social media side or on front desk, you know, swiping people in or, or whatever it may be with sales as yeah. well. I think yes, taking I think those would, basics, yeah. yeah, taking those basics away from a group fitness management's role and making them automated in some way, I think is key. I think that's what's You're making a little app there, Tony. <laughs> Don't tell too many people. I'm working on it. <laughs> like a good little app to make. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I know there's 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 other companies out there that are doing <laughs> stuff, but I think it's it's I think it's vital. And that's one of the things I've seen over my time is looking at a group fitness management role, how mm. can we make their role easier? How can we give them more time to really do the things they need to do? Instead of yeah. just updating a timetable, finding covers and yeah. You know, the amount well, of clubs that I would see that would still write their numbers down on a sheet of paper and then that piece of paper would be put into a lever arch folder and it'd stay on the shelf and no one would ever look at it properly. Yeah. Let's have, a, have yeah. a look at those times. It's like with the Les Mills stuff, looking at your mm-hmm. timetable, looking at your numbers, looking at those things and setting targets, making sure yeah. that, hey, you know what, you're a Monday night at 5.30. It's a peak time slot in the club. I could have a monkey teach it. And they're still going to be peak. Yeah. Let's make sure that what we've got going yeah. on is spot on. You know, mm. those instructors, and, and this still, I'm going to say it infuriates me, but makes me laugh at the same time. The instructors that turn around and say, Well, don't you know who I am? I teach Monday night at 5 30. Like my class is always full. <laughs> it's like, Okay, let me take you off Monday night at 5 30, which is always full. Let me put you on the worst time slot in, in you know, the club. Let's say it's Thursday night at 6 30. We're getting seven people. You reckon you're a great instructor? Yep. Yeah. You reckon you're the greatest (laughs) instructor? Go. Show me what you can do in that 6.30 Thursday night time slot. And if you can turn that around and make it full, you're an awesome instructor. Yeah? Yeah. Monday night, 5.30, come on, you know, peak time slots. Yeah, you're a great instructor. You're a good instructor. And I love that about you as Mr. or Mrs. Instructor, but, you know, Show me this. Show me you can actually do I this. I love trying to, um, with instructors, and when you're trying to make a balanced timetable, is having your, um, I mean, they're all great, yes, um, but having some of your prime instructors, um, always having one of them on a good, on a peak time slot, but always having one of them, like you just said, on a real off peak time slot, because obviously they're going to bring people in. So that's a smart move to do anyway, in, in my and my books anyway, so yeah. So in back in North Sydney at five thirty on a Friday night, place oh, is yeah. a ghost town. Even Friday lunchtime, <laughs> you know, in, in in North Sydney and CBD area, Friday uh, Friday lunchtime yeah. was almost ghost town as well. We managed to find some gun instructors to get in there, and mm. since Friday lunchtime, all of a sudden, phew, chockers. Yeah. yeah. Friday night, Friday night was quite was did fluctuate in 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 um, in autumn, winter, and spring. Yep. Yeah, Busy games. But as soon as it got to those warmer months, yeah, it would, no matter who you had on there, you could have, you know, a body pump or a Les Mills presenter come and teach on a on a um a Friday night at 5 30 and it'd still be like, you know, no, yeah. it's not gonna happen. It's all I dependent. find a bit earlier on Friday nights works works well, four thirty or five. Yeah. Yeah, seems to um seems to work. Um I I like um one of the things with world gyms is that um uh, for the equipment and stuff that we choose for the group fitness studios and rooms, um, that it's all chosen by group people that do group fitness. <laughs> so I love that, you know, all the GFMs and group fitness instructors are choosing, you know, the best bikes to, to ride on it and they're choosing the best pump equipment to use and they're choosing the best microphones to use. It's not, it's not been bought by someone who's sitting in an office choosing yeah. the best deal. Yes, you know it's not, it's, so, yeah, it's not someone that's just doing purchasing for a living. It's the people that are on the ground teaching and actually using the equipment. Using yeah. the equipment. And and same with John out in, in the gym. Like he only buys the best weightlifting equipment because that's what he does. And he tests everything out first. Um, and that's why, you know, world gyms have a certain spec of, you know, hammer strength and a certain, certain spec of matrix and the different companies of what they suggest are, are the best to train on. Um, same with the group fitness. We, we you know, we're always going to use body bikes. 
Um, we're Thank always you. Thank you as well, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I'm just saying it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but they are seriously the best. Yeah. Um, and it's because we ride on it, you know, they, they fit most people's bodies. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, and always the Les Mills smart tech equipment, that's the best for body pump. Um, it's it's interesting yeah. and it's nice to hear that. I mean, there's I think there's more clubs these days that are realising that not one equipment manufacturer does everything absolutely amazing. Yeah, and I and, and yeah. that means no disrespect to any of the equipment manufacturers out there. I know no. most of the guys, and I'm I'm mates with most of them. But it's these day and age yeah. clubs when they're looking at it are wanting, as you've just said, wanting the best for your member. Yeah, and yeah. and equipment manufacturer number one over here, while they might do five or six pieces, absolutely amazing, they can't. They're not doing absolutely everything amazing and that's when yeah. when clubs really want to invest and make sure they're getting the best for members are heading yeah. out and choosing the best piece of equipment to put in their gym to make their gym the absolute best yeah. in that yeah. way i think and more and more clubs on the floor using it as yeah. if they know what it feels like yeah yeah, yeah. it's uh yeah. I, i'll be honest and say i've come up against some challenges with some council run facilities yeah when we mm. go to tender a body bike and all of a sudden we get information back saying, oh, no, they've gone with X, Y, Z. Okay. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. And the, you, you find out their entire gym has X, Y, Z equipment throughout yeah, it everywhere. Yeah. It's, like, it's usually okay. there. Yeah, of course. Yeah. The and companies are going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's when you realise that it's someone that's the bean counter at the top that isn't actually yeah. involved in the gym that's gone, yeah, okay, that was the best deal. Yeah, we'll take that. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very yeah. Much. You can always tell those ones. Yeah. <laughs> But no, it's, it's thank you for bringing it up, and it's a nice thing to actually hear as well that that you guys at World Gym are choosing the best equipment for your members because it well, shows you the best for your members. Even flooring, I even find with flooring, I'm going to you know we'll we might try a flooring in a club, and then we'll go no, that just that's just not the right flooring. It gets slippery with this, or it's not right for that, or it does. It's got not got enough give for Zumba. You can't swirl on it, or little things. So it's just. You know, when you're in there giving the feedback and it gets taken on board for the next club and, and things like that. So um, it's constantly evolving and choosing the right equipment that works best for all of the programs, really. So, yeah. On that, which in, in sound equipment and, and mics are you using in club, is that, are you finding it's different to each club or is there one specific oh, mic that sure you would micro, use? The sure microphone system is definitely yep. the best. Yep. Um, we used to use, I'm probably not going to say the names, but it had the yellow, yep. the yellow there and do yes. not bend. Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I find, and they were, I think that's because we, that's all we had at the time anyway. The Shure microphone system is very low end sounding. So it has more depth and it travels better. Um, it's not high end and hasn't got the ting, ting, ting sound to it. So I find the Shure microphone systems across all the clubs, wherever I've put them in, just sounds just sounds so much better. Yeah. Is there yeah. who who do you guys get to use to do your your install for your sound stuff and your speakers and everything throughout clubs? Is that something you want to share? You don't uh, so have to if you don't want to. Com- uh, we have Compact do that. So I don't know. They're here on the coast. Uh, I think they're in. I think their main office is in Sydney, actually, because I know they're having troubles with getting certain things in. Well, they're doing our new install for Stafford, Will Jim Stafford, which opens in November. Yep, nice plug there. Um, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to. I was going to bring it up as well. <laughs> yep. And we need PTs and group fitness yep. people for that one. Thank Brilliant. you. If anyone's listening, get in touch, and I'll get you in touch. <laughs> <laughs> Any reformer Pilates people for that one? We're putting reformers in too. So nice, yeah. Nice. Now, I'm going to touch on that while we're here. Now, Stafford yeah. is going to be the. Is it the biggest one that is going it's to be the biggest? Really huge. I haven't got the exact measurements. It's an old uh, roller skating rink. Oh wow! So it's a pretty, pretty cool looking club. Um, so yeah, we just got into it today. So today was our first walkthrough. Excellent. Um, that's exciting. And, uh, that's yeah, exciting. Yeah. I get excited for you guys and any club owners when they <laughs> when I know that something's happening and they've been in touch with us with regard to equipment. But when you guys get that first glimpse in there and, and be able to see it, having that yeah. that vision of wow, yeah, just getting a feel for the building. So when is energy. when is Stafford opening then? Say that again. Let's. let's uh, well, my husband says November, but I'm being <laughs> a bit more realistic. 
Yep. So I'm hoping he's soon. right, but you soon. Yep, yep. I, I think it will be more January, to be honest, but, yeah. Look, I, I yeah. would say... I'll, I'll 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 agree with you with that, John. Please, if you're listening, I'm I'm I'm. <laughs> no, I know you love to get things done now. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> I look. I say. I, I anything at the moment. Shipping times to get stuff into the country, even yeah. You know, I'll, I'll share an example with you. Something that I needed to get from Sydney up to Cairns. Now, yeah. I booked it in with a freight company. They said to me, Tony, book it in today, Monday, and you'll see it up there the following Monday. Today is Friday after the Monday. Oh, yeah, that it should have been. Still not there yet. On Monday, I got in contact with said freight company and said, hey, guys, where's these five crates that I was sending up to Cairns? Oh, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> You, you, you don't know where yeah. the stock is that I'm sending to my customer right now. Oh, somewhere between Sydney and Cairns. Okay, where? Don't know. Hmm. Okay. So then I, I do my thing and I chat to my customer. I let my customer know what's going on. The customer's understanding exactly what's happening. And we find out that, yep, yeah, okay, might be there today, but probably not, maybe Monday. So I'm like, okay, so is it going to be yeah. there on Monday or what's happening here? Yep. Finally find out. Then the customer rings me back saying that the freight company's just rang him and it's being delivered at one o'clock today. Yeah. Mm. It's, it, it, we're in times where it's, it's all so, that kind of stuff. Is, yeah. yeah. It's, and and that's yeah. why I say, you know, John, I would love to say November with you and I hope that it does happen yeah. for you. But but please, you know, <laughs> that this time, these times have changed and, and anything can happen at the moment. You know, even getting stuff from Sydney, one side of Sydney to the other can sure. take 10 days. I better check that we've ordered body bikes too, can I? Yeah, we have. Yeah. No, always good. He's onto it. He's onto it. Yeah. This is the Group X Podcast. Hey, Jolly, is there anything that you guys have done group fitness wise or even not group fitness wise in the gym in world throughout world gym that you think or that was a big challenge that you want to share with us is there anything that you sort of you remember in the time that you've gone wow this was the big thing that we managed to get through it and this is how we did it and I know I've thrown you on the spot (laughs) no I think probably well the first thing that comes to my mind is constantly hearing that world gym is a bodybuilder's gym and oh do you do you actually have group fitness <laughs> so that's i mean that's the first thing that comes to my mind is trying to um just educate people that yes we are we have a gym for everything we have you know yes we are serious about weight training we're actually just serious about getting results i uh, i would say um so you know, serious about the weight training, serious about group fitness, um, serious about nutrition, um, which starts as soon as you walk in the door because obviously our point of sale is that we have all your pre-workouts for sale as a single shot. We have all of your, um, you know, your enduring enduring amino acids while you're training. Um, Your protein shakes will sell to you as soon as you walk out the door. You've got meals in the fridge that you can take with you as soon as you walk out the door. So, I feel like that whole point of sale thing is a diff- point of difference for us. Um, and really just, yeah, but the challenge was educating people that, yes, we do have group fitness um, and and just getting them up into the group fitness rooms. And then I think that's changed a lot, like you said before, um, since our Ashmore days. Um, now our, our clubs do amazing with group fitness um, some more than others and some with different programs and different areas. Um, but that would be my one challenge was trying to, and it took me about 10 years, I reckon, to actually break that stigma. Yeah. What, and, and, and I'll ask this question knowing that there might not be an exact definitive answer. What mm-hmm. do you think it really has been that has changed that stigma? If you could, if you could really uh, I, drill down and pinpoint into, you know what, Tony, I think it's this. Is it? Is it? Was it the? Is it social media? Is it yes. educating from club around having the right sales staff talking to the right members around what they're really after and having that, no, that journey, first, or is it? 
first, as soon as you said social media, I really truly think when our instructors started videoing parts of their classes or videoing my classes at such and such, and this is what we're doing, um, they were like, oh, where is that? Where, where is it? it? Where even is the group fitness room? Do you know what I mean? Like, so it was social media. As soon as social media started happening for us, I feel like that just took us out into places we wouldn't normally get to. And I feel like that's invited people into the group fitness rooms. And that's really created a camaraderie um, within each of the group fitness rooms. So in the cycle room, obviously that goes off. We have a huge cycle following. In our exfit downstairs with all the PTs, um, those classes are amazing. Um, and even in our in, in our group fitness studio, you know, with more of the Les Millsy type sort of classes, um, they're just getting a following because the instructors are just putting it out there. The instructors and are I creating. Think that's, that's where it changed. As soon as Facebook and all of that kind of stuff came in, I was like, oh, it just went boom. It's nice. So, it's nice to hear. And I, I asked that just to, to, I suppose, share with with people that are out there that sort of are having something similar, you know. And and, and as we said, there, there was that stigma around well, Jim, being a bodybuilding gym, you know, knowing yeah. that, you know, I've known for, for many years, but there's, I'm, I'm assuming there's probably still people out there that looking from the outside, unless they open the door or when I say open the door, really yeah. do their research and have a look, you know, it's, it is not just a bodybuilding gym. There is a lot yeah. more going on there. It is that one-stop shop. It's intimidating. I said, is it, you know, it, intimidating or would you could you use it to really inspire you it could be intimidating it could be inspiring but people now are more inspired because obviously there's, there's a lot of good bodies at world gyms i mean they're, they're all training seriously and a lot of them train for fitness competitions yes and and figure competitions um but wouldn't it be more inspiring i just feel like if you, you know, really 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 are interested in your fitness you want to yeah. go where people understand what they're doing. You don't yeah. want to just go to a. <laughs> I'm going to say this. You don't just whatever. want to go to a, go to the bland <laughs> variety of whatever. Yeah. yeah. You want to go where you know that that people that are in there know what they're doing. They're serious about yeah. their fitness. They're serious about doing it. And yes, there right. is more to life than just lifting heavy weights. There is yeah. also more to life than just doing cardio and, and group fitness. The mixture yeah. of both, a mixture of everything Cross in there. Cross training. Yeah. Cross training. Is, 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 is key. You know, the, the um, uh, consistency is the word, you know, getting people to yeah. do what they're doing regularly and getting them in there to have that, yeah. that as you're saying, the cross or the variety of what they're doing is where people are going to get results. And I think with um, World Gym too, because our motto is seriously fun fitness. So the serious comes first. <laughs> so seriously fun fitness. And it kind of, yeah, it's it's really found its niche. I just find that our group fitness, um, you know, there's a lot of like, there's all sorts of people in there. So it's yeah. not just young. It's not just old. It's actually such a mixture. Yep. Um, how, old such you, a, how old would your oldest member be that you know of, that you're aware of? Oh, he was 80, was he 80, 80? Uh, he's not there anymore at the moment, but he was about 83, I think. Yeah, at Burley. Um, and what was he then, doing? What was he doing in his training? What was it? Was it weight training only? Was oh, it on the floor, group? on the floor weight training? Yep. And as well, Jim Singlet. Yep. Love it. Um, love it. <laughs> and that's another thing. I love that at World Gyms, um, everyone wears World Gym clothing. I mean, it's just blown probably John and I away. It's how many people love the clothing. So, yeah, they're wearing it in all the classes. They're wearing it in the gym. You see them wearing their hoodies out in the streets. It's just, I mean, every season we're bringing out a different range. So I think we keep it interesting and stuff like that. But it's really cool seeing people actually um, support the brand and wearing and the be. brand yeah. as well. Yeah, I think that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and the instructors all wear them for teaching as well, so they don't have to, but they do. Yeah, they do. They, they enjoy it. It's, it's, yeah. it's, I think that's you, you've 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 got a culture that's been created there around that, and I think that's yeah. when you know you have the right fit members. You have everything going on when they love the brand that much. 
Yeah. They're willing to work when they're training and also outside yeah. of training as well. They and believe we in what you're doing. Hard to create that culture, I think, too. I think just starting from the bottom and and just working your way up. <laughs> I was going to ask yeah. you, why do people train at your gyms? But I think you've just answered that for me. Yep. It's what why you do they create. Train at our gym? Yeah. Why, why, yeah. Why do people come to your gym? And you've just answered that with, with most Define. of our conversation. So, yeah. Yeah, it's it's what you create in those gyms in that environment that makes yeah. people want to be there. They want to be part of that, and a lot of yeah. clubs don't have that. Yeah, and mm. I, 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 with all due respect, to all clubs out there, if you don't have that, you're missing. You're missing the point straight away. You can have yeah. passionate about something and to be so passionate about mm-hmm. something, but if you don't set it up properly and don't have that culture built within your gym. Mm. It's really hard to create. You know, you guys have done well in that. You've got the clothing, you've got all the, the supplements, you know, they can do their food, they've, from weight training through to cardio training to all of that kind of stuff that's in there. Yeah. It is that one that's stop, one stop, stop. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And it's that's that's this day and age, I believe, is what's making clubs so successful. Mm. That as mm. well as your equipment and everything else you're doing. I think we put money where it's more important to put the money Um, um, because obviously we don't have millions and millions of dollars. So we think, okay, what's the most important thing? Number one, it's the equipment. It's, you know, it's what we offer, the group fitness that we offer. Um, And, and yeah, and the point of sales, I think is, is it's not the fancy toilets and it's not the waterfall as you walk in or (laughs) I I wish we could put all that, but it's just, we just put it to where what matters the most, I think, um, and that's good equipment and just the vibe. Yeah, just yeah, it's just not yeah, it, it, you know, it's just not all the fancy stuff because at the end of the day, people are going to sweat all over it and break it and do whatever they do to it. But it's just um, we just seem to put it where it's more important. Jolly, what is in store for World Gym in the future? Now, in, in New South Wales, obviously, we're still in lockdown. We're about to come out. They're what they're calling Freedom yeah. Day. Can't stand that terminology. But anyway, yeah. as of the 10th or the 11th or whatever it is down here, that's going to be happening. But what is in store for, for World Gym in the future? Are there, are there anything you can share? Are there any anything that you're, <laughs> you're, you're, I would say, allowed to share at the moment or would like to share? I'm allowed with to this, say uh, World Gym Wellness out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Watch that space. Okay. Um, yeah. Yep. Um, yes, a little bit of a focus on that, but I can't yep. say any more. Yeah, on that no, that's time. exciting. That's exciting. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, but really, you know, just really focusing on making what we've got better. So we don't have a set number of, you know, we're not trying to get to 100 clubs or whatever it is. I mean, in fact, we do the opposite at the moment. We say no, 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 100 times because the people that we want to run or set up or own their own world gyms need to be really hands-on and they need to be people that understand, you know, they might even be PTs, they might be group fitness instructors, they might be, um, as long as they've been in the industry and are hands-on and are going to work in the industry, um, you know, it can't be just a a farmer come in and decide that, oh, that'd be nice to own a gym. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, they've um, got to be involved in what's going on. We're quite fussy about, yeah, hands-on, who's who's running them. So it's really just putting back into what we already have and growing on that, um, making better offerings. Like, you know, we're going more into the reformer Pilates and obviously a lot of people are offering that now. Um, but to try and offer uh, uh, more of the boutique stuff under the one roof, Um and, you know, and bringing the cost down for them to be able to do sort of everything under that one roof. Um, I think that yeah. that's. You, I think that's brilliant. You've you've nailed some things that I believe are key in in when you're saying that. It's almost like you would have, and this is you know Tony Fantasyland when I say this five or six <laughs> studios, yeah, that each do everything. Yep. So yeah. that, that that there's the boxing studio, there's the cycle studio, there's group fitness, there's the yoga Pilates. You know, there, there's the rock climbing thing as an example, or there's the the yeah. uh, functional style training. Having each of those studios working, that your members wouldn't need another membership anywhere else. Yeah. 
They come to the one yeah. place, they've got everything, and they've got all of those offerings in that one place. I think that's more more these days where how clubs, bigger clubs, need to combat the smaller boutiques that are opening opening up and popping up yeah. everywhere. Yeah, I think it's and those yeah. offerings that we do offer still have to be done really well and done really authentic. So, um, not we obviously can't offer everything, but at yep. each club you might have something a little bit different. So one yep. might have the Pilates, one may have the hot yoga, one may have the huge functional athletics area. Yep. Um, and the good thing is that we can choose in different areas what may work better. In yeah. that club. Yeah, and totally. I think um, that, that's really dependent on your demographic as well, on yeah. what's around that area to yeah. what you would focus on heavily in, in those gyms. And I think knowing knowing that and having that understanding is key yeah. as well. Well, that's why with Stafford, I think um, the reformer Pilates and the we're choosing a huge virtual screen now for the trip there as well. So we'll do the trip and because I don't know any uh, – um, gyms in Brisbane that actually have the trip either. So trying to offer new stuff um, and stuff that, you know, is awesome and works. Um, yeah, and just, just yeah, just trying to get new stuff, just not doing the same old, same old, you know, just opening a cycle studio and, and it's just freestyle cycle or just cycle. It needs to have, it needs to have extra now. It needs to have more. Yeah, you need to be able to yeah. compete with the boutique cycle studios that either have opened up yeah. or are looking to open up that yeah. are just focusing on that. You need to be able to have that offering in your studio that, as you're saying, yeah. does have RPM, trip, sprint, freestyle, yeah. everything yeah. so that your members have that wide and as well as uh, virtual as well. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's one thing. Hey, on on you know, clubs reopening back up that are in lockdown areas, that kind of stuff, and, and mm-hmm. there's been a lot of talk in social media and in certain areas around omni channels and what they're calling it, and I'm still getting my head around that terminology because it's weird to me. But having that membership for your members that can do a live class but also are able to do a class at home yeah. It is still live. Yeah. There's a lot of people that they're talking at the moment around people that have been vaccinated or people that haven't been vaccinated and whether they want to come to the gym or they're not feeling comfortable to the gym. Uh, yeah. Our world gym, are you guys looking at some form of membership where members can have an online membership as well as an in-gym membership? so that they can do stuff at home if they don't feel confident. We've got World Gym Everywhere that we offered during the COVID um, and they can continue with World Gym anywhere as well. So even if they're not coming into the club, the members get that for quite a cheap cost because it's actually in, it comes from America, so it's offline. And that one actually offers um, all the it offers Les Mills as well as the World Gym anywhere and um, so we definitely will keep that ongoing, which we brought out very quickly during um, the second lockdown. Um, but America had been working on it for a whole year anyway, so it had a lot of content already on it um, and such awesome content too. Um, Tiffany is our uh, main group fitness guru in World Gym America. Um, so the content on that was was beautiful. And also they're looking for more content over here from all of our instructors in Australia. Um, So, yeah, so they'll still be able to do the live memberships and then they can also do that one. I'm not sure about the whole, I haven't sort of sat down in the meeting that we are having on um, passport vaccination or vaccination passports and stuff like that. I'm not quite sure what the, the absolute Right and wrong. Yeah. 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 The whole COVID thing, I think, has been spoken about so much recently that, that I think most <laughs> yeah. of us are sort of over it going, yes, we know what's happening. Yes, it's going. Well, yeah, but then okay. I don't really know. Everyone doesn't really know what's happening, though, either. No. So yeah. And I think each, like, each, yes, state, each state, each state, what does that mean? Is, <laughs> yeah. Each state is different at the moment from what I'm sort of yeah. gathering as well. You know, where New South Wales is different to, as an example, what's happening in WA is an example to happening in Victoria. You know, it's it's different. There's not one yeah. sort of set of rules. And I think it's... it's it will yeah. be hard if that is 100% the case. And obviously, if we have to, then we have to. Um, it's going to be hard. 
But no, I think that's that's something we we work on as and when the time comes. But it was more yeah. my question was more around you know that, that group fitness offering. If there is something, or are you thinking about sure. having I something? Yeah. Just having a chat to to um, I I won't say who, but the one that my podcast is about to come out on Monday. So yours, there's another one before yours comes out before this episode yeah. comes out, I should say. Um, and I was having a chat to that person, and, and we were talking around um, a video camera in a group in a studio that is so that yep. that can be broadcast to someone that's watching at home. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so that was yeah. something that some clubs are sort of looking at and sort of, okay, how can we offer that and how can we, we do that yeah. so that your members, and even if it is only for a short period of time until people yeah. feel safe and confident and wanting to come you back into the definitely have certain again. classes that were set up to be live streamed. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, has yeah. that created. I know that. in America they do that a lot. Yeah, I think the the key with that though is making sure that the instructor who's teaching isn't just mm-hmm. teaching to who's in front of them, but he's also teaching yeah, to who's up there yeah. as well, I, and making sure that that person that's at home yeah. feels like they are part of what's going on and and understands yeah. without yeah. without that connection of them being in the room, but still having the connection with them being yeah. at home or wherever they may be. And I think as long as the people that come to that class know, because I think in the um, a lot of the ones in America that when it's a class that's also on a live stream timetable, they have in brackets, you know, next to it, live streamed. So I think the people that came to that class would then know that, yes, I'm talking to them as well as to you <laughs> sort of thing. So um, as long as that, they know that. That has to be given to some people as well because some people might not want to be accidentally caught on the side of camera if there's a mirror behind yeah. the instructor they don't want to be streamed you know some there's people's yeah. privacy and all that kind of stuff so i think that's yeah. that is key as well it's one it's a little thing yeah, but i think sure. it's still something that the clubs need to, yeah. to look at the future yeah. Yeah. So. no it's exciting what's happening in the future it's just um the sky's the limit i think with group fitness in the studios and the gyms at the moment there's just I think it'll be more about quality rather than quantity moving forward Um, and not just masses of classes. I feel like it's just classes that really work, stuff that really works. Do you guys advertise Um, your your virtual classes on the same timetable as your live classes? So it looks like there are. Glad you said used to. I'm so glad you said used to. (laughs) (laughs) I did used to because I was told that it looked better with it all on the one timetable. It looked like that we had a lot of offerings, but what it did look like was just very confusing. (laughs) So I found found when I separated the timetables, it was much better and much easier for people to read. And I know they say to put them all on the one timetable. So when you look across and say, okay, I'm going to arrive there at 9.15. At 9.15, I've got this choice, this choice, this choice, or whatever choices you have. Um, I just felt it was better to have, you know, it more live classes on one timetable, virtual classes on a separate timetable, and it just is easier to look at. Yeah. It's, you, you, you don't need to show that, oh, you know what, we've got 170 classes a week. Well, whoop de doo yeah. You know, yeah. you don't really. You don't, let's be realistic. Okay. You don't really. You've got an offering of all those classes, but you yeah. don't really have those classes yeah. every week. And we did that at first, and, yes, it sounded like that. And then when people come, they go, oh, you've got a lot of virtual classes. So I started to think of it differently. And also I found in the Cycle Studio when I offered heaps of virtual classes, um, the live trips that I was offering at live were very low because why would they bother coming to a live trip when there's hundreds of virtual trips everywhere? So I did the opposite. I took it all back to play on demand and then I then I just had the live trips and two virtuals and the virtu- and the live trips have just gone boom. Huge. So I was like, oh, hang on. They told me if I have virtual, the live will come up, but it didn't. So it's just, I guess, everywhere is different. So I took them all off. So play on demand. Yes, they still have it. They can play it on demand whenever they want, but they're not turning up to a destination. So I found when there was a destination, they turned up for that, and they've really just taken off as soon as I did that. I think mean, live, live classes are always going to be, the draw card, yeah. Having a real oh. instructor, having an yeah. instructor there in front of you, and and 
and when I say live, I'm talking about still to the trip and that kind of stuff where there is the the scenery and everything going on. But a live instructor, someone that's taking you through the ride, a coach. Yeah. Even though there might be yeah. as a virtual, there's a live instructor on the screen when that was recorded, that's still not a live instructor who can connect with you yeah. one-on-one in that class. That will yeah. always do it. I think having the virtual offering and having the other offerings are great for those that can't get to the gym that still want to have yeah. that experience. It's still a sales point. But, yeah. Yeah. 100%, but it's never, ever going to take away the experience of having that live instructor. And I remember yeah. when I was at Les Mills, we'd virtually just come out and I remember having conversations with some clubs around what are they trying to do? They're trying to take us away. They're oh, trying to get rid of us as a job. Thing, yeah, yeah. They were so, they were, they were so, you know, now you're putting all the, the cream of the crop, the presenter instructors up there. No one's going to want to come and do my class. <laughs> Yeah, not, true, was it? <laughs> not at all. Yeah. I think, yeah, yeah, there is a place for virtual, but I don't think it's all over the timetable like we were doing back then. As and you know, showing you've got 170 yeah. classes, you don't need to. Yeah, because we get probably 50 to 60 people do virtual a week, so so it's not obviously it's not a huge thing, but it's certainly an offering, and it's a good offer. People might join because they can do classes at 1.30 and 2 o'clock in the day when I'm not going to put a live person on. Um, so they may join. That might be the difference between them joining or not. Um, so 50 to 60 people a week um, doing virtual is not, is not terrible. Um, it also allows that room to get used. Yeah. Instead of being a ghost town when, 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 yeah. when if they're not classes. It's it's allowing that... that um, that not retail space, but that space in your in your club, the footprint yeah. to be to be getting some form of value during that time. But when I mean, if you just had three classes a day, you know, there's how many hours yeah. of day? <laughs> you know, it's not yeah. being utilized. It's sitting there, yeah. it's ghost town. It's that dead dead space. It's good to be able to have that offering. So yes, anyone can walk in, and yes, there's. I think too when think, um, the touring people and showing people around for sales. And there's all that energy going on in the group fitness rooms still. It actually creates a really cool energy anyway. Um, they might pop their heads in and a body attack's going up on the screen and, and they'll say, oh, this is the class that you come to when there's no live classes. And they'll, oh, really? Wow. Do you know what I mean? Like it's still quite new to people and it just creates a bit of a, well, that's cool. So, hey, yeah. When, when your sales guys do a tour around the club, yeah. And I've never asked this question to anyone before. It just popped into my head. So you're the first one here. Do do they sit down with them first and ask them what they're interested in or do they go for a tour first of all? They sit down first and ask them what they're interested in. Yep. And when they show them around, do they just show them the main things that that person's been interested in or do they take them on what I call the museum tour and show them everything that's going on? I think they show them the main things and then they say, would you like to see the whatever the other areas or you know maybe they're just joining for group fitness would you like to go into the gym and have a look I, they i know that they do offer to take them but obviously if they don't want to go there or see it or don't need to see the crash then they don't yeah um and i, I asked because i just remember the days back at, at north sydney and fitness first that someone to come in for a sales uh, an appointment, yeah, having a chat to the sales guys. The sales guys will take them around and show them everything first and then come yeah. back down and have a chat to them. And I'd be like, why, oh, why, no, they do why, the why did you do that? I'd chat first and find out what you're interested <laughs> in because I'm not going to show you past the crash or past the, the you know, the yoga studio if that's yeah. not what you've told me you're interested in. If you've just yeah. told me you're interested in the gym floor and maybe the cycle studio, they're the two things yeah. that I'm going to show you because that's what I know you're yeah. interested in. I'm not going to send yeah. you on the, the museum show and show them, and here's where the lockers are and, and over there is where you can get a drink and yeah. they don't care. They don't want to know. No, it's they just, don't it was, to just keep it real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> show me what I'm interested in. Show me what I've come yeah. in to sign up for. The rest of the stuff, yeah. you know what? Yeah, I'll have a look at it and see it as I go along. Yeah. You don't yeah, need to show sure. it to me. Yeah. I know yeah. where the frid- fridge is for drinks. I know where the cafe is. Yeah. yeah. I'm good. I can see that. Got eyes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was interesting. I, just, yeah. I wanted to ask because I've never asked it before and I just wanted to see, see what you guys yeah. are doing. No, no, place. they definitely do the so. questionnaire first and then see what they're interested in. And yeah. Cool. Jolly, if there's, yeah. if there's a, if someone's or has anyone ever given you words of wisdom in your life that you want to pass on to people or, or if they've given you something that's really stuck with you, what would it be? Mm, now you have put me on the spot because there's so many different times when it, you know, uh, you know, 
they would, do you know, this is embarrassing. It would come from my mum. Yeah. <laughs> that is brilliant. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. Just to always be true to yourself and to speak your own truth. So, and I do that, I think, in classes. I do that with our managers. I do that with, I think, with everything. Um, even when we're in, in um, town hall meetings with America, it just just always speaking on your truth, you know what I mean? Like, oh, no, I think this, and, and not to just sit there and go, oh, yeah, that would be good, but just go, oh, what do you reckon if we did this instead? But just I think that would be the one thing is just to always don't be afraid to say your, your truth, you know what I mean? Speak about what you think might be a better option or or not, not a good option or, yeah, I think, yeah, there's no specific thing, but that's probably yeah. the first one that comes to me, yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. It's yeah. something I've started asking more and more people recently and and it's it's giving me, I suppose, a different perspective on on getting people's understanding of certain things as well. You know, yeah. mine's always been stay in your lane and you do you. Yep. Yeah, well, Stick another one would be, would be from John is, and is that you can't be something for everyone. You know, as much as we try to do everything, but you can't be something for everyone. So... It, it, you know, all these little things that you resonate with, but yeah. Another one that stuck with me today is that uh, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah, yeah. So it's a good one. It's it just makes yeah. me think. It's like yeah, if I'm not learning something every day, there's something wrong. You know, yeah. I've picked something yeah. up today. I was chatting to the freight guys, you know, it's, and chatting to you now as well. There's stuff that I can go. You know what? Yeah, I I, I get that. And I appreciate well, it. I've just started listening to podcasts. So there you go. I'm Excellent. getting something all the time now. I'm like, where have these been? <laughs> Not listening to music and Corey all the time. <laughs> exactly. After a while, it gets a bit much and you need something else. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Jolly, yeah. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I appreciate you taking time oh, out of your busy day you. to have a chat and sharing your story as well. Thank you. Oh, good. Thank you so much. It was fun. We'll have to do it again. <laughs> love to. Love to. Well, that's it for this chat. Next week, I'll be doing a best of. This means I'll be going through all 18 episodes and choosing the best bits to share with you. There's a golden nugget in each episode that's worth resharing with you. Also, if you are a club who'd love to come on for a chat or think you might know of someone who has a great story to share, let me know. Until then, stay safe. Chat soon.